Hi there, my name's C2A. I'm a progressive metal instrumental guitarist. I've been releasing music for about six years now, six, seven years now, and I'm here today at Focus Right HQ. I started playing guitar when I was about 12 years old. It was just a high school music class. They said, you know, here's some crappy keyboards, here's some nylon acoustic guitars, and I don't know, I just, the guitar just stuck me with an instrument and uh, yeah, I've been playing ever since. So it's uh, 16 years I've been playing guitar now. Yeah, I was, uh, I did a rotation of, uh, of high school bands with a, with a bunch of friends of mine. Um, on, on a quick aside, one of the friends I played in, uh, two of the friends actually I played in high school bands with, uh, played with me live with my current project and one of them played bass uh, on my, latest tour in the US. So it's nice to have a bit of continuity there. But yeah, I was uh, in and out of high school bands that we sort of formed pretty much with the same people, but just different musical ideas. Um, one of the bands was an indie band. And obviously I was just like, okay, this is an indie band. So I want to use seven string guitars and play minor seven and minor nine chords and make everything more complicated than it should be. So yeah, that's, that's generally what I've done to all the bands I've been in. Um, what I did back then with those bands, I'd say recording is a strong word for what we did. It was, it was generally a case of, you know, taking a cable out from the back of an amp straight into a PC, into Audacity, um, using bare bones drum samples that when, you, when you're in high school, you'll, you'll search all the internet for. Um, the, so what, what it mainly was, was an avenue for me to put down ideas. So in order to show something to the band, I would sit home and, you know, just take a, take a direct line out the back of my Marshall amp and find some awkward jerry-rigged connection into the microphone jack of my PC. And just to get the ideas down, you know, so to have, you know, a basic guitar track, basic drums, poorly mixed, not mastered. Um, but, you know, I was always wanting to write music and recording came about as a vehicle for, you know, as a sort of notebook for what I was writing. Um, so that's when I sort of, sort of, recording became an enabler for me to, to get my music down. And then in university, that's when I sort of discovered, you know, what a proper DAW is, um, what, an, what an interface was, and, you know, that there are proper, uh, via, the proper drum plugins, for instance, to, to you know, to simulate the, the sound of a real drummer. Um, so that's when I got really into it and I got really focused on the idea of, um, of actually recording it and having like a good output and having like a fully mixed and mastered, you know, end product. So that was, that must've been about in 2010 when I started really getting into that. Um, around the same time, a lot of other sort of bedroom producers, uh, mostly in like the, the sort of progressive metal slash gent, if I'm, if I'm allowed to say that. Uh, Vane started doing the same thing as well. So that's when my interest in recording really sort of started to kick off in a, in a real meaningful way. Uh, so I have, a, I have a master's degree in physics because um, I thought I could either do a music degree or I could get me something, get a degree that would get me, let me have it. Sorry, uh, I have a physics degree. And for me, it was either do a music degree or do a degree that gets you a job. So I went with the degree that gets you a job. Um, in terms of my production knowledge, that was all just trial and error. That was just, that was just a long, hard and tedious process of trying different things, recording test mixes, uh, posting things to forums, getting advice from people. Um, it was always like at the, it was always at like the forefront of my mind, you know, like even though I was doing a university degree, it's like, how can I get this mix to sound better? What can I learn? And it was, it was always like basic things. Like one of the most basic things was I wasn't mastering them. So my mixes were clip all to hell, like to horrible degrees, like just, just making really obvious mistakes like that all the time and just picking things up as I went along. And, and then eventually culminated in me saying, okay, I think I know enough to try and make an album. And so that was back in 2011 when I recorded my first album. 
Oh, so everything I do now musically is under my own name. So the, the project started out was just just me recording, just me recording my bedroom, doing everything by myself. Um, and I did that for a couple of years, just releasing music online through through Bandcamp and eventually pushing it out through you know streaming services and other digital stores. Um, I never really sort of thought too hard about playing live because you know I, I was happy with what I was doing. And then, you know, along comes an offer to play a festival. Uh, so that would have been my first ever live show. So I just, you know, got together with some friends. My little brother actually played bass in that in that first gig. He knew a guy who could play drums. He was a fan of bands like Meshuggah. So like, you know, the style of my music would, you know, kind of be similar to what he's used to playing. And uh, yeah, I played that first festival. And then, you know, uh, well, one one thing with the internet is that you keep meeting people, you keep uh, you keep being introduced to people, you keep making you keep making connections. Like the the old saying is like it's who you know, but the thing is, building a musical network these days is as easy as just you know making a connection on social media. Um, and then you know one one guy I knew was a was a promoter in Japan. He said, "Protest the Hero playing a tour in Japan. Would you like to support them?" And you know I would have bit your head off for that opportunity so yeah I ended up you know going over to Japan and like I said through just you know through just speaking to people through making friends online you know I had more opportunities to get touring as I was learning to mix and produce there was one forum sevenstring.org that a lot of people post on for like, you know, mixed critique or, you know, advice on things. And I was posting there as well. And it was also where lots of people um, like Misha Mansur from Periphery, you know, started up posting. And it's also where I met a um, friend and Australian guitarist, Pliny, who's um, absolutely killing it at the moment. Um, and just, you know, like I said, making these connections, meeting these people. And that that's where I sort of started off in terms of doing it online. And then when I started releasing music, I would put it there, but I'd also put it up on Facebook. And this was back when, you know, Facebook was still, still, you know, quite good for discovering new bands and it was easy to follow the bands that you liked. And I, I don't know, like I just, you know, the, there was the website Bandcamp where you could just put your own music up and people could download it. And, you know, when I started out, it was free. And then someone told me, you can't give it away for free, at least give people the option to, you know, donate some money. So I made it free, pay what you want. And um, that's just how I kept releasing music. I kept on putting it up f for free slash, you know, people can pay f pay what they want. And the thing that amazed me is like people were paying for it. You know, normally when you give out something for free, people will just take it and, you know, walk away. And I guess a lot of people did that. But the fact that people were willing to support me was was really cool. So yeah, I just kept on going, you know, a couple of years of just releasing music that way, recording. I was, you know, doing at least one release per year. And then um, it got to a point where I was, you know, I graduated from university. I was working full time as a, as a sort of junior technology consultant, sort of a technology management consultant. And it was just eating into my time of doing music. So I decided to quit that job. This was right before the tour in Japan with Protest Hero, quit that job and focus on music full time. And it was through just pushing my music out through the internet, people being able to discover it, people being able to, you know, share it, uh, that I was able to just make the jump and go straight into becoming a full-time musician without having to do, do go through any of the traditional loopholes that musicians were kind of, and that I, when I was younger, expected would have to go through, like getting a label, you know, recording in a studio, all this kind of stuff. I, I feel like I bypassed all of that. I never had to like do any local scene grinding before getting my first show offers. It was just purely as a result of, you know, gaining notoriety and, you know, getting up, uh, pushing your stuff out through, you know, social media and internet platforms. Yeah, so the, um, the guitar company I work with is called Mayonnaise. They're a Polish sort of custom guitar brand. Uh, the way they work is that they have a bunch of base models and you can customize however you want the base model to be. So this is a Mayonnaise CTS-6 Pro. Um, it's the Pro because it has a, a Floyd Rose style bridge. Uh, but yeah, every option on the guitar, apart from the body shape, is picked by me. And I have my own custom inlay on the guitar as well. Um, so yeah, um, 
all my guitars, almost all my guitars that I have for Mayonnaise, I've I've ordered through them and uh, they've been super helpful in you know getting me exactly what I want on my guitars. Um, but yeah, amazing guitar brand. I just um, when you get to this level of guitar, like super like high end boutique guitars, like it's always just you know what you prefer. And for me, like Mayonnaise has been the instrument that really you know gets across how I want to play, makes me feel the best about my own playing. Uh, so I think a couple of things, uh, especially if you're starting out learning production, you know, uh, use the internet. It's like, compared to when I started out, there's, there are so many resources out there that are getting started. Um, so take advantage of that. Take advantage of all the information that's out there. Um, you know, there are so many tutorials, both, you know, on website form and text form. There's forums, there's Facebook groups that you can get help on. Um, so definitely use the internet to your advantage. Um, the second thing is to to manage your expectations. A lot of people feel like they need to be able to learn how to mix and produce in you know six months, and it's honestly just near on impossible with the amount of things you have to learn. You need to be constantly doing things. You need to constantly try out new things. You need to be you need to you need to be willing to think that. You, you need to be willing to think that you're, you're aiming for improvement among, along the time scale of months to years as opposed to thinking that you'll get stuff done in like a couple of weeks. Like, there's a lot to learn, there's a lot to digest, there's a lot to process and you have to actually actively be doing it. You can't, you can't learn how to mix and produce just by reading about it. You have to do it. And um, this leads into my third point, don't be afraid of failure. Like just try out an idea, whether it's a musical one or a production idea and just you know go for it and see if it works and if it doesn't work okay cool that's a lesson learned and you can move from that so so yeah um use the resources available to the internet manage your expectations and sort of go for incremental improvement in what you're doing and don't be afraid of failure cuz failure is where you learn the most Yeah, so I'm on I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram. Um, I have a YouTube channel that I'm like hoping to ramp up more content, more like music education content. Just just search my name C two A S I T H U A Y E, and you'll find me online there. Mm -hmm.